My name's Micaela Luisa Garcia, and I'm from New Braunfels, Texas. I am a um, direct descendant from German immigrants who came over in 1854, and today I'm at the Sophienberg Museum to learn more about my German heritage. Hi, Ms. Givas. Hi, Good to Mika. see you again. The German immigration movement was pretty spectacular. For Texas, it was a direct thing. Texas was a republic, so those wide open spaces of land, that was fairly cheap. How did the German immigration start in New Braunfels? Well, in the early 1840s, a group of noblemen got together and they formed a, a Verein. It was called the Verein zum Schutz Deutscher Einwanderer in Texas. And what they did is they publicized this land that people could get over here. One of the main guys was Prince Carl. Prince Carl led the first group of people here in 1844. The first ships landed um, on the coast uh, in Galveston, and then they got back on another ship and went to Indianola. And from Indianola, they followed the Guadalupe River up to where we are here. These are some of Carl's things. Um, he was very much a prince, and so he brought an entourage with him. He had a tent, folding furniture. This is a writing desk. This part of the museum is set up to re reflect the ship and the whole way it felt to travel all the way across the ocean. That cool. trip took like two months. Really? Mm -hmm. And if you imagine that one of these spaces here, these rectangle spaces, was your birth. Imagine four kids, a husband and wife in that space for two months. Wow. <laughs> That's intense. <laughs> that is intense, I agree. They sent over 5,000 people in 10 years to Galveston in order to colonize and make a colony. The communities that resulted, New Braunfels, Fredericksburg, Bernie, Comfort, Blanco, what we think of as the hill country towns in Texas, retained that German heritage for a long time. We're at Conservation Plaza, okay. and all these buildings were moved out here to keep them from being destroyed. My name is Martha Rayler. I'm executive director of New Braunfels Conservation Society. We started about 1972 bringing old buildings that were being destroyed out here to form a little German village. And we have got a whole little town out here that's all furnished and restored to the period from about 1849 to about 1880. This is about an 1850 example of uh, a Sunday house. Mm -hmm. The people would come in on the weekends and stay here for grocery shopping or to the church the next day and then go home. Mm -hmm. This is a very primitive structure. Okay. Um, again, all they needed was just a place to stay for the night. How long did it take to um, kind of make more things for the kitchen and all, all the utensils that they needed? Did they bring them all over or did no, they collect over because time? each family could just bring one trunk. You're pretty limited on space. Mm -hmm. But uh, they would have the blacksmith make things. The okay. blacksmith was probably the most important person in, in the towns. This is called a shroud laid broke with the four twisters down there. This is exactly how they did it. That the when piece right there is an authentic piece from 1846 when the settlers came. I am Evelyn Weinheimer. Uh, we are here in the Kamla House, which is part of the Pioneer Museum complex in Fredericksburg, Texas. Prince Soames, of course, was the one who founded New Braunfels. And then he left and went back to Germany, and that's when our founder, John Moisebach, brought the first group here on May the 8th of 1846. I have some pictures of my family here, and the first um, Nowatnys that came over in 1854 was Wenceslas Nowatny, and he was married to Agnes Solek Nowatny. And they had seven children, but they lost one daughter as they were coming over in their voyage, and they had oh, to um, bury her at sea. And so they arrived in Texas, like you said, in Galveston, and then they mm -hmm. went to Indianola and then um, came up the Guadalupe, the Guadalupe River. River to New Braunfels. His firstborn son was Franz. When he came over, he was about 16 or 17, and he was very civic-minded. Why is this important to you? This is important to me because 
It gives me a good background of who my ancestors were, and um, I really like the connections that I have in the town that I can walk around and say, you know, my ancestors helped build the courthouse and helped build the schoolhouse. I think it's important to know where you come from and um, what sort of people have made an impression on the world before you.